Welcome to the shop guys. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly synchronize multi-carbureted engines, whether they're two-stroke or four-stroke, using the simplest of tools, which is this. And we're going to do all of that on our latest project, PP, also known as Project Polaris. So let's get right into it. And here she is, guys. Hopefully this will be the last video on Project Polaris because now we have an engine installed. If you guys remember last time, this engine bay did not look anywhere near this. We actually had this engine on the bench. So I haven't started it yet. This is all gonna be done live with you guys here. But before we can do any of that, I wanted to show you guys how I'm gonna synchronize these two carburetors to make sure that when we snap the throttle, they both snap together. Before we get right into it, I think it's important to take a second to explain why you want this to happen. Well, being that this is a two-stroke engine, each cylinder is separate from the other, and if the one carburetor opens slightly quicker or slower than the other one, it's gonna make the engine kind of run rough, and that's also caused by these cables that are activating the, uh, uh, the slides. So in my little illustration over here, which is, you know, bear with me guys, it's quite awful, but this center is the inside of the sheave or that actual cable, and then you have the outside. Of course, this is kind of exaggerated for illustration purposes, but as the cable, or as any cable for that matter, does a bend like this, it also wants to ride on the inside of this curve or inside of the casing. So when you release that cable with the spring action, it's actually gonna lose some pressure and it's gonna slacken up and go up inside the casing. And that's gonna cause some slack in the cable and also in the reaction time between the slides. So if I just show you guys what I'm talking about when I activate the throttle, these are going up and down. So how do we make sure that both of these carburetors do that? Well, like I said, we're gonna stick some extremely proper tools in here. I'm just kidding, they're just popsicle sticks. But let's just put them in there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're simply going to take these popsicle sticks and we're going to set them just inside the slide here with the weight of the popsicle stick hanging down, just like that. Let me grab the camera to show you where they're sitting exactly. That's a close-up view where it's going to sit right there. Now all we have to do is slowly apply some throttle and watch which one of these opens first. I'm not sure if you guys see it, but right here at the very, very opening, this guy over here is moving, this guy is not. So all we're gonna do is we're simply gonna adjust that at the top here, we're gonna loosen the jam nut. You either have to go higher or lower. In my case, I'm gonna have to drop it just a little bit until it actually does the same as the other one. Getting closer. Little increments at a time, guys, that's the secret. Too many quick adjustments, or too many big adjustments, and you'll be chasing your tail. Right there. See that? Perfectly synchronized. All right, guys, and that's all you would have to do if you have a very good engine, if your engine is in good health. Uh, and on these two-stroke engines, like we've already known, uh, a best way to do that would be to check it with a compression gauge. So I've promised in the last video that I would do another compression test once the engine was installed so I could see what it actually has as a baseline. So here we are. We're going to do it right now. We do just like the last test. We're going to do three pulls. So we've got 120 on this side. Three more pulls here. Not sure if that was really accurate because the first one kind of missed a little bit, but we're at about 120 again, maybe a little bit higher. So that's good. And as we all know, guys, we can't have any variation between cylinders more than about five to ten percent so 
you can compensate here on your uh, on your slides if you feel like your engine is not exactly accurate or if it's not doing well if it's not balanced but now that we have a known healthy engine that's all we need to do all right guys that's going to do it for today's video if you guys found the video informative or helpful in any way you know what to do it's down below uh anyways guys that's it for today we still got a little bit more work before we can fire it up stay tuned for that until next time stay safe